we are here to talk about a very uh, common uh, painful situation uh, which is called trigeminal neuralgia or uh, a particular type of uh, facial pain um, there are there is one nerve that supplies the sensation on the face uh, one on each side that is called the trigeminal nerve and the distribution of the nerve is in three segments the upper the middle and the lower uh, with three branches of the nerve and the disease that we are talking about is a syndrome is a pain syndrome it's uh, it's 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 quoted to be one of the most painful uh, di- uh, syndromes in in the world and um, you know herpetic neuralgia and uh, trigeminal neuralgia are two extremely painful situations um, the best uh, description for this is the pain is yeah, has led people to commit suicide even and there are patients who say i've never had such a pain in my whole life and it comes as a lightning sp- uh, yeah, pain which uh, you know speeds from the outer part of the ear all the way to the center of the lip or to the eye or to the jaw and this happens in split seconds and you can get multiple such split second uh, pain uh, 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 you know shooting sensation and through and through now the uh, the main reason for why trigeminal neuralgia is one of the commonest reasons is because there is a neurovascular conflict that means there's conflict between the nerve and the blood vessel and there is a constant contact of the blood vessel on to the nerve and each time the nerve pulsates there is a small um, uh, damage to the nerve and that nerve damage causes short circuiting and pain in the form of um, I mean, uh, it, re- it it presents with a form of sudden shooting pain like you would see in a in a short circuit because there's uh, you know each of these nerves are myelinated i mean it's got coverage in these nerves and those uh, coverings of the nerves get affected and one nerve meets the other giving a short circuit that's in lay terminology so the there are multiple ways uh, you can treat this trigeminal neuralgia and um, dr nirmala will be talking to us about how the medical management can go, go about it. Yeah, so there are various uh, uh, ways of treating uh, uh, trigeminal neuralgia of which, yes, uh, medical management is one such thing. It is tried only when the MRI uh, is, it is, does not show any vascular compromise like Dr. Ravi Gopal Verma told that there can be a vessel which can be abutting except for in these cases where there is a contraindication for medicine because what happens is the patient will suffer so much of pain that they can ha- they can be thought to have a psychiatric issue and they can be treated for that rather than getting treated for a trigeminal neuralgia so the medical management is there are various uh, medical management like giving medicines to control the pain in the form of carbamazepine or in the uh, form of uh, 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 gabapentin or in the form of uh, any pregabalins uh, but yes all these drugs can be uh, uh, mani- you used only to certain extent because each one of them um, have their own side effects also uh, since they also are there are few of them who can be seen as dip- depressants patients can have drowsiness they can have uh, uh, they can feel very uh, light headed uh, taking these medications and yeah uh, at one point of time these medications may have to be stopped and um, so the main issue f- uh, will be when an mri shows that there is a vascular compromise for which dr ravi gopal verma will be telling about the surgical management of it so as we just discussed um, medical management is the mainstay because with the pain most of them go to neurologists and uh, neurologists start treating with medication uh, these are pain uh, these are the pain modulators the medications that are used um but if you look at the uh, the natural history of uh, trigeminal neuralgia each time the the there is good relief with the pain with the, the medication and the after a few months the intensity of pain comes back then you increase the medication then the pain comes back and you keep increasing so there's a cumulative effect of pain and it keeps going up and then as you bring the medications up you'll have side effects of the medication so that is when we the, we say that it's not uh, it's not uh, right to go beyond a particular limit there is a small number of people who do get good relief with pain and uh, of pain and you know the, you know the the effect of the medications last for years but most people have uh, have uh, develop have continue to have pain and develop uh, resistance to these medications 
And um, as Dr. Nimla was saying, when there is a conflict, when there is a vascular conflict, very definitely that surgery is going to help. And we have seen that, uh, we've done large number of cases and we know that um, doing a surgery really helps. The surgical principle is very simple. We have to separate the nerve and separate the vessel. When they both are separated, so each time the vessel pulsates, it does not affect the nerve. So how do you do it? So we have got a lot of inert material and the commonest used is Teflon, a Teflon wool, which is kept between the blood vessel and the artery. So when the artery sort of pulsates, it shock, it's like a shock absorber. So the Teflon wool will take the shock and will not transmit it down to the nerve. And the nerve slowly improves uh, in, uh, and in, in, in most cases, uh, actually at 90% of the patients, we have complete relief on the first, second day. There are some uh, small number of patients whom the pain takes some time because there's something called pain memory. So it takes some time before the real uh, benefit, beneficial effect uh, comes and that's luckily a very small um, thing um, per percentage. So um, I think uh, the most um, effective treatment is being in non-invasive to the nerve because there are many invasive surgeries where they block the nerve with the alcohol, they block the nerve with the local, they burn the nerve with the RF generators going through the foramen nerve. These are all temporary situations and um, we have noticed that even after going to a number of injections, the pain again, you, may, you might have relief for about six months to a year. The second attack, you'll have two months relief. Third attack, you'll have a month relief. And then fourth attack, even if you give an injection, it may not just help or do you try to burn, it may not help. But such patients do not do well with the microvascular, which is done later on. Because they say this is less uh, complicated or open surgery is not required. So they go for injections. But we have noticed that such patients who have gone multiple injections, when we do that also, may not be very beneficial. So it, the best uh, modality of treatment is surgery, and that is non-invasive to the nerve. You might open your skull and we'll go through a very safe corridor without uh, really harming any part of the brain. And then we do this um, maneuver of separating the artery and the nerve, and then we've seen the pain goes the next day. And the nerve is intact, there's no damage to the nerve and the side effects of chronic uh, irritation to the nerves also is, uh, is not there and uh, the total benefit is there. So when somebody suggests uh, a surgery for a microvascular de decompression, please consider it's a safe surgery, it's got really good benefits and we don't need to keep loading you with chemicals in the form of painkillers. Thank you. <laughs>